looks like here today. So yeah. Um, so let me just get all of the like screens and stuff here. Come on now. Okay. That way I can make sure I can see everything. All right. <laughs> so while folks are joining, um, we'll just kind of get started. And um, the last time I was here doing a presentation, I got some really great questions. So I hope that you all continue to ask those questions if you do have them. And, um, you know, I think this is, I mean, everybody's saying, of course, it's such a strange time. Um, but I really applaud you because not only are you trying to figure out how to do high school during this time, but you're also taking an opportunity to learn more about your future options. And I know that it's hard because it's easy to just focus on like the immediate stuff, but it's really awesome that you all are taking the opportunity to learn about some things that you can do in the future because this is your time. Like it's the time in high school to learn about what to do after high school. So I really appreciate you all being here. Um, so yeah, my name is Hannah. I use pronouns she, her, hers, and I work at the Westminster campus of Front Range Community College. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started and um, we can go from there. So I don't know if any of you all feel like this kind of deer in the headlights as you're trying to think about that future. Um, but I know that this is totally how I felt um, when I was in high school. And I think that a lot of students, there's just so much information and you don't know what to, to do or what to ask. Um, some of you might be the first person in your family to kind of go through this. So um, if you don't take anything else away from today, I hope that you remember that there are people like me at every college and university and we are just, our jobs are to connect with students like you to answer your questions and to help you reach your goals. So um, if you don't remember anything else from today, just know that you can always reach out to us with questions and we are here to help you with that overwhelmingness uh, to get you through the process and to get you um, enrolled as well. Um, so the first thing I like to say is that no matter if you're looking at Front Range or anything else, um, that uh, education after high school can really help you out because um, you might not have in mind like a specific dollar amount that you want to be making in the future, and that's okay, um, but you probably have some goals, right? Like you want to have a car that works, and you want to be able to afford different things like traveling when we can do that again or whatever, um, and that takes money, and so uh, having more of an education can definitely help you out with the money. And so what this chart showing is that the green is money. So you can see with more education, you're slated to make more. Oops, sorry. And then on the blue is the unemployment. So if you're unemployed, obviously you're not really making money. Um, and so education can also help you prevent unemployment. So, um, so good things to consider. But the thing that I like to point out here on this chart is that you can see this some college no degree and associate's degree area. Um, so the some college no degree is a certificate. And a certificate can be completed in as little as five weeks at Front Range Community College. And so we're not talking about, like a lot of times people are thinking like, okay, four year degree, like four years is a really long time and all of that stuff. But we've got some great options that take a year or less and can help you um, make just even a little bit more money. So um, I want you to know that I'm not just talking about the four year college degree. I want to be talking to you about all of these different options that you have. Okay, so I tried to work in a little trivia here if anyone wants to use the chat um, to make it a little bit more engaging, but if you can name some other colleges and universities besides Front Range Community College, uh, go ahead and chat those in. I 
And if you don't want to play my trivia because I don't actually have any prizes I can throw at you right now virtually, <laughs> I get it. Too. We have we have stuff, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I could get you stuff eventually, but I can't throw it to you through the computer. We've, so. we've had a guest speaker earlier today. You guys can write in the chat. There you go. You guys participate. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well. So you all are probably getting a lot of information. Maybe you've gotten mailings, maybe you're getting a ton of emails, um, but there are a ton of schools out there. And Front Range is one of the 13 community colleges in the Colorado Community College system. So you can see us right there. Um, but there's also these technical schools. There's the four-year public schools. There's the four-year private schools. There's all kinds of schools. And these are just some of the ones in Colorado, not to mention out of state. So you have all of these options. And again, this is where I feel like that deer in the headlights can come because it's like, how do I decide through all of these options? Um, the one thing though that I do like to point out too is that we have this type of school um, that's not regionally accredited. So you all might have heard commercials or radio ads or um, whatever kind of ads <laughs> uh, through your social media about some of these schools like College America or IBMC, stuff like that. And I just want to point out that it they're, they are different than the other schools that I have listed here. And really the, the top four options, the technical schools, the public and private schools, the community colleges, we all have great things about us and then things that we're missing, um, but we can all be a really wonderful option. The issue with the not regionally accredited schools then is that um, if you decide to go to them, they are incredibly expensive and their classes do not transfer. So they will often say, hey, we're accredited, um, but they're not regionally accredited. And so if you go to College America and pay all of that money and then you decide you wanna to come to Front Range, unfortunately, we can't accept any of those credits. So I, um, they're not very upfront about that and I just always wanna make sure students are aware um, because that is a, a important, I think, to consider when you're trying to make your college choice. But again, those other things, the other schools, there's a lot of different great reasons to go. So maybe you will respond to this question and said, um, what have you heard about community colleges? Like we see a lot of students, um, the 13 community colleges served last year about 121,000 students. What have you heard about community colleges? All right, yeah, cool, thanks. So I got a message that they're fast, they're cheap or less expensive. Um, some folks are not, don't know very much about community colleges. Great, thank you all so much. So yes, I would definitely say that we're not cheap. We, like, we don't like to think we're cheap because I think that implies less than and we provide the same quality education but the less expensive part is huge. So I'm really glad that several of you have heard that. Um, and it's okay to not know much about community colleges because I don't think we've always done a great job about um, talking about ourselves, but we have a lot of really great things to offer. Um, sometimes students have heard that, that um, stereotype that community colleges are only places that you go when you can't get in anywhere else, or they're kind of like your last choice or last resort. And I always like to point out that some really successful people, um, like the people that you see on your screen here, have all gone to a community or junior college. So, um, and we are seeing folks choosing to come to the community college as their first choice for a lot of different reasons. Um, and some of those have to do with how I encourage students to really think about picking the right school. So remember, I showed you all of those different schools that you have the ability to look at and attend. Um, how do you make that choice? So I really encourage students to think about all of these bullet points. And I know for me, I was the one that looked at that first bullet point only, right? Academic interest, my major. I just asked, do you have my major? Do you have my major? And then when I decided to go to school, um, 
I went to a school that had my major, but then uh, I changed my major after a year. So that didn't really matter so much. And I think all of these other things really impact your college education too. Um, things like, you know, if you're used to living in kind of the Denver metro area or suburbs, you have access to stores and services and things that if you go to a place that's more rural, you may not have access to. Um, you know, the, I was very shocked to go to college, um, to go from a Denver public school with um, a lot of students of color to uh, a college that didn't have a lot of students of color. And so the environment was very, very different. Um, you know, the size of not just the institution, but also of your classes, um, because some classes can be really large if you go to large schools. Um, and that's way different than probably anything you've ever had in uh, high school, middle school, elementary school. If you're really um, interested in doing something specific in terms of involvement opportunities or organizations, you know, making sure that that's a, a part that you can build into your college experience because students that actually participate in these extracurricular activities actually are shown to do better um, and be more successful academically. So it's really great to have those things. And then of course you want to look at, you know, what kind are you eligible for admission and what is it going to cost you and what kind of scholarship opportunities but hopefully those are not the only things that you're looking at because again there's a lot of different pathways into that so um, so some of these things might be really important to you some of these things you could kind of care less about like you don't really care maybe about what the size of the classes are as long as they have the sport that you want to play or something like that so it's not going to be the same for everybody, but I definitely encourage you to think about all of these different things when you're making your college choice. So where can Front Range fit into that? So if you're looking for the small classes, we've got an average of 19 students in a class. Our largest class gets to about 38 students, um, which is maybe a little larger than what you're used to, but it's definitely nowhere near the 350 to 400 people I had in my first college class. So if you think about hundreds of people um, versus 19 to 30, um, you definitely have a different kind of class experience. And that really allows for that faculty engagement and individualized advising that we're able to provide. Because if you're in a class of 300 people, like I'm sure my teacher did not know my name or who I was or anything like that. Um, and our faculty, they do know their students by name and they do know things about their students. And, and when we can be on campus again, they can say hi in the halls and know. So um, I think that's something that our students really, really enjoy. In terms of a good transition from high school to college, what I mean by that is not that it's any easier or anything, but that we have a lot of really great support services that can help you be successful academically so that when you go to a university, you are a strong academic student. And also we don't have any dorms. Um, so you're not trying to get used to this new social experience at the same time you're trying to get used, used to a new academic experience. So I think that's really helpful too. Um, like several of you mentioned, we cost a lot less and I will definitely talk about that. Um, and we provide a flexible class schedule because the majority of our students are at least working part-time, if not full-time. So we have classes that go into the evening. We have online classes and we've been offering online classes since the 90s. Um, so we really try to work with our students who have other things going on as well. We're open admission, which again, I'll talk about in a little bit, but basically that means that everybody is admitted. So it doesn't matter what your test scores are, or what classes you took, or whether you even took the test or what your grades are, everything, um, everybody is admitted. Um, in addition, I'm sorry, now I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, not COVID, I just have allergies. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, in addition, we have like, we have a lot of transferable classes. So if your goal is to get a bachelor's degree or your goal is to go to CSU or CU or MSU Denver, we can get you there because we have classes that will transfer to all of those institutions. And then we also have programs that are offered that help you get into a career field. So if you're not looking to transfer, we have those programs too. And then like I mentioned, you can live at home, save that money. Um, you don't have to live on campus. You can't live on campus actually. So um, that's definitely something to, um, some people are looking for and some people are not. 
Okay, so um, feel free to chat any questions whatsoever. I hope that gives you some things to think about. And now I wanna talk about um, front range specifically and kind of where, where we are with that. And um, after I'm done, I will chat in a few links that um, can help you uh, learn a little bit more about front range too. Um, so you can see all this stuff and you don't have to be like frantically writing stuff down. And awesome. So I got a question about can the classes be transferred to CU Denver? And definitely, yes. Um, CU Denver is another public school and we can definitely transfer there. So great question. Okay. So front range, um, we want to uh, have, we enrich lives through learning. And I wanna talk to you about what sort of programs we have. And oh, another great question about how long a class is. And I will get to that in a little bit. So um, hang on to that question. If I, for some reason forget, then just let me know. All right, so here are our locations. We are spread out all along the Front Range. We have the Westminster campus, we have the Boulder County campus in Longmont, we have the Larimer campus in Fort Collins, a Brighton Center and online. And I got a question about does FRCC have dorms? And no, we do not. So none of these campus locations have dorms or places that you can live like on campus. Um, so students either live at home for a little while or um, maybe they move out, um, but they are not living on campus. So yeah, no dorms. Um, a couple of cool facts. We are the largest community college in Colorado. Um, over half of our students are first generation. So that means that their parents did not go to college, did not get a bachelor's degree. Um, and so if you are a first generation student, just know there's a lot of students like you at Front Range. And we also have um, a high percentage of students of color too. So uh, about 44% right now at our Westminster campus. All right. Can anyone name the degree that you earn from a community college? So it's not the bachelor's. I've been talking about that. Yay, associates. You all are awesome. Yes, so you get an associate's degree at a community college. So two-year schools, um, those are community colleges and junior colleges. We're called two-year schools because the associate's degree that you get here um, can be done in two years if you go full-time, which is basically taking like four to five classes a semester. Um, so we have four different associate's degrees, as you can see there. And then we also offer those certificates, those short programs of study. Um, we don't generally offer bachelor degrees, although we do have two right now that we offer at Front Range, and we don't offer any of the graduate degrees. However, if those are your goals, again, we can get you started because we can transfer. So these first two associates degrees, Associates of Arts and Associates of Science, are designed to be our transfer degrees. So you can see the Associates of Arts kind of goes into the Bachelors of Arts, and the Associates of Science goes into the Bachelors of Science. Okay, and I mentioned um, two years. So again, sometimes it gets a little confusing because you think you do two years here and then you go to a university, that's a four year school. But if you've done your first two years with us already, then you only have two years left when you go to that four year school. So it's not like two years and four years, it's just two and two to get a total of four, okay? But again, that requires you to go full time. So that's taking about four or five classes or 12 to 15 credits a semester. Okay, so again, with our Associates of Arts degrees, um, these are the ones that we have at Front Range Community College. Um, we have our Associates of Arts and Associates of Science. So what you'll see in these is that um, you, what you do is you do your general education courses that everybody does when they get to college, like your English and your math and communications and stuff like that. And then you'll do your lower level classes in your specific area. So like for biology, for example, you would have your anatomy and physiology, your microbiology, stuff like that. So like I said, these are designed to transfer. So when you start with us and then you go to your university afterwards, you don't have to continue to take those general education classes and you can focus on your upper level classes in the specific area that you're trying to get into. 
So, um, you know, when, if you were doing biology, again, you would really focus in on some of those upper level biology classes when you transfer. Okay, so associates of science, you can see here, they're in sciencey sounding things, right? Associates of arts is everything else, even if it doesn't sound super artsy, like I know criminal justice doesn't sound artsy, but it's still the associates of arts. So um, all of these, again, are in areas that you generally need at least a bachelor's degree. And um, again, they all transfer. All right. So um, like I mentioned, we actually have two bachelor's degrees and one of those is a bachelor's of science degree in nursing or a BSN as it's sometimes referred to. Um, we are excited to be offering that option for our students um, as many folks are interested and need a bachelor's degree um, in nursing. All right. So if you remember my other screen, we also have associates of applied science degrees and associates of general studies. So an AAS and an AGS. Now AGS, the associates of general studies is confusing because most people think that's what you do when you get your generals and then you transfer, but it's not actually a transferable degree. So we kind of leave the AGS off um, because that's not really people's general goal. Um, they either want to transfer or they want to get into one of these applied science areas. And so again, these are the programs we offer at Front Range. Um, and the Associates of Applied Science degrees, the key word there is applied because you're applying what you're learning in the classroom to getting a degree or to getting a job, sorry, afterwards. So these programs may not transfer, but that's okay because you may not need a bachelor's degree to be employed. And they're really hands-on classes, really focused on those job skills. So um, you can see here like our new, um, this is a picture of our new Center for Integrated Manufacturing um, for our manufacturing programs, but lots of just really cool spaces on our campus um, that you can um, get the education and then um, get a lot of training so that you can go out and start working. We also have one Bachelor of Applied Science degree and this is in geospatial science, GIS. So if you're interested in GPS systems and mapping and stuff, very cool program. Um, all right, and then finally we have certificates as well. And again, certificates are those short programs of study. So again, less than a year usually. And they can either be a stepping stone. So you take a class, you complete a certificate and then continue your education, but you're working in an area. Um, or they might supplement the education. So you might have some, um, like, like for example, CU students go and get an architecture degree, but they don't teach you how to use the computer-aided drafting program. And we do, so you can have that. Um, so they could do that on top of it. So um, I'm getting a question here about if you have an Associates of Applied Science in Nursing, can you transfer classes to another college? And actually you can. Um, so nursing is a little bit different in that there are, um, so nursing is kind of funky because whether you get a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree, you actually take the same licensing exam to become an RN, a registered nurse. So you can, you do have to be an RN, um, you have to take that licensing exam, but if you have the associate's degree and you're licensed, then there's multiple schools that offer an ADN, so associate's degree in nursing bridge program to BSN. So an ADN to a BSN. Um, and there are lots of programs that you could definitely um, engage in as well uh, if you wanted to do that for transfer. So yeah, I did say that the AAS um, degrees are not necessarily transferable, um, but there are a couple of exceptions with that. So that's awesome. All right. So those are our general programs. Again, later I'll chat a link um, that can give you a little bit more information. Um, you can find out about that. Um, then there's a couple questions coming in. So awesome. Um, so how do I go about getting in medicine? So um, other than nursing. So you can see that we have a lot of general um, certificates and associates degrees in healthcare fields. But if you're actually wanting to go to medical school, we would encourage you to go back here. Come on, sorry. 
Okay, so we would actually encourage you to go back here and get an Associates of Science degree, probably in biology or chemistry. That would transfer to a university so you could get a bachelor's degree. And you need a bachelor's degree before you apply to medical school. So you would apply to medical school if you wanted to become a doctor, a physician, a pediatrician, um, uh, anesthesiologist, surgeon, any of those kinds of things. Um, and again, you need a bachelor's degree before you can't just like jump into medical school right out of high school. So um, you would actually do again an associates of science degree with us and then transfer so that you could keep getting those um, program, uh, keep getting that degree, the bachelor's degree. Um, and so then the bachelor's degree program for nursing, does it go for all types of nursing careers or is it just for one career? So that's a great question. Um, the bachelor's degree in nursing is usually required for um, several different programs um, like or several different places of work. Um, but the general RN, the registered nurse is pretty general. So it prepares you to work in all types of nursing careers. Um, usually, if you want to specialize, like if you want to become a nurse midwife or um, work with certain populations or get into becoming a nurse practitioner, then you have to continue your education for a master's degree or beyond. So the bachelor's degree is really general um, for your nursing career. And then again, you can continue your education after that for additional. Um, I'm sorry, my partner's alarm keeps going off. Let me stop that because he's not. Hey, can you stop your alarm, please? Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, cool. Okay. So good questions. I love these. Um, how long does the nurse aid program take? Awesome. So our nurse aid program is usually about five to 10 weeks. So it fits within one semester. It's really quick. Um, so it's probably our fastest certificate program. And then do scholarships work for the nursing program? Yes. Um, so there are some scholarships that won't work, of course, because some scholarships may be specific about their, um, their general like some like if you had a, a scholarship that was to support you in going into engineering that won't apply to our nursing program but um general scholarships yes will work for the nursing program so awesome yay great questions okay so um all of those programs and things that i mentioned are a part of um oh in here sorry i was gonna just chat that um, to everyone so you can check out our website to see a list of all the programs. Okay, um, so all of our programs are organized into these six career and academic communities. So they are all of these, um, all of those programs are here. And the great thing about these is we can help you um, because they each have an assigned advisor and they can really help you figure out what it is that you should and stick on that path um, based on your interests. And this is, these are also great too if you're not sure what you wanna study because that's a lot of students too. Okay, um, cool. So if I get an AAS in nursing, can I work in hospitals or do I have to work in long-term hospitals? No, so um, an AAS, again, you take the licensing exam to become an RN, a registered nurse. So if you, um, have that, you can work anywhere that an associate's degree um, registered nurse can work. Now, there are some places of employment that do require the bachelor's degree, um, but, it, but there are hospitals where you can work with a, um, an AAS. You can be working and then continue on for your bachelor's degree uh, and things like that. So yeah, you, don't, you can work anywhere with your AAS that um, has that requirement. Great. Okay, so some of you might have found that there's no programs on our list that you're interested in. That doesn't mean that you can't start at a community college because we have this great program, um, Guaranteed Transfer. So what this is is that 
Some of the classes that we have at Front Range are guaranteed to transfer to any of these schools, any of the four-year public schools, not just the ones on the screen. Um, so you can always get started with classes with us. Sometimes we have students take summer classes with us if they need to catch up, like they're going to UNC, but then they take some summer classes. So even if you don't see a program that you're necessarily interested in, you can still take classes at a community college and they will transfer generally to your program at, an ins at your other institution. Awesome. Oh, okay. So how do I find a job after getting your associate's degree? So a lot of our programs um, have an opportunity for um, associates of applied science. Many of those have like an internship or a practicum, um, especially in healthcare, you're doing clinicals. Um, so that's a great option. Sometimes folks get hired right out of those. Um, you know, they're working hard and they're showing that they're going to be successful uh, and they can do, they can just get hired straight out of those. We do have a career success center too that has a bunch of jobs on an online database that you can look through. Um, employers will sometimes contact us and our faculty members. Um, and then our career success center can also help make sure that you've got a good resume and your interview skills are good and things like that. So um, we've got a lot of support to help you with with that um, in terms of getting a job. Um, so hopefully that answered the, the question. And especially in nursing, again, clinicals are a component of that. So um, many folks either get hired out of that or start making those connections so that they can be eligible to or be ready to apply for other jobs. Okay. Um, in addition to just guaranteed transfer classes, we also have a bridge to bachelor's program in a university transfer track. So this allows students to transfer, the university transfer track allows students to transfer after one year. Um, and we are the top transfer institution for C CU, CSU, and MSU Denver. Um, and then we also have the bridge to bachelor's program, which is brand new. And it actually guarantees you admission to your for your institution. So if you're trying to apply right now and you find that you're not eligible for admission into some of those schools, this is a great option for you because you can start at the community college, you can get those transferable classes, you can pay less for them, and you can still be guaranteed for admission at the school that you're wanting to go to afterwards. Um, a couple of last transfer highlights. We have a specific transfer plan with Regis, and Regis is a private school, so it gets you the opportunity to save a lot of money. We have engineering. Um, so you didn't see engineering as a specific degree, but we have a lot of great transfer programs. So if you are interested in engineering, it's definitely a possibility. We have a new um, transfer program in interpreter preparation for American Sign Language with the University of Northern Colorado. And if any of you are looking at going out of state, again, we are regionally accredited. So we generally have um, transferable classes to schools out of the state as well. Okay. So you all had a lot of really spectacular questions um, coming in for the programs. So feel free to chat some more if you have those, but um, I'm gonna go into quickly uh, the admissions piece. Okay, so I sort of gave this away because I already told you open admission basically means we accept everyone. And so what we have students do is we have you go on to our website and apply for admission and your application for admission stays valid for a year. So if any of you all are seniors, you can apply right now. But if you're juniors, sophomores, freshmen, um, unless you're taking concurrent enrollment classes while you're still in high school, you'll want to wait to apply for admission until you're a senior. Again, we accept everyone, so there's no fee, there's no um, GPA test scores, you don't need to write an essay, there's no deadline, so you just hop on our website and you apply. After that, you get your student number and you're a student, but there are some other things that you need to go do before you can actually register for classes. And so that comes with um, something called Navigate through your student account. Um, there are some additional to-do items, like we want you to fill out your financial aid, your FAFSA. This is available right now. So again, seniors, you can fill out the FAFSA right now. Um, this is how you qualify for grants, which is free money, loans, which would be money that you borrow, but then you pay back later, and then work study, which is getting a job on campus. So if you want to qualify for any of those types of aid, you fill out the FAFSA, and we encourage everyone with a social security number to fill out the FAFSA. If you do not have a social security number, there's usually a different form through each school that you would fill out instead. 
Okay. And now the state of Colorado also has one as well. So um, if you don't have a social security number, don't fill out the FAFSA, but know that there's other options for you um, and let me know. Okay. You also qualify as an, a Colorado resident for the College Opportunity Fund or COF, which is free money from the state of Colorado that helps you pay for your education. And then of course, we encourage you to apply for your scholarships. Um, Front Range has a ton of scholarship opportunities. Those will be available December 1st through March 1st. I can help you apply for those if you'd like. And then there's lots of other scholarship opportunities as well. Last thing with to-do is we, uh, to-do items is we want to make sure you're in the right class, right? So if you're ready for calculus, we don't want to put you in a basic math class. If you're not ready for calculus, we don't want to put you in that class. So we have, um, a placement form that you fill out so that we know what level you should be placed into. So if you have taken the ACT or SAT, this is where you can um, jump in and um, enter those scores to see if they will place you. But if you haven't taken those tests, you can take our free assessment test. Um, you might have um, some of the classes that you've taken in high school might tell us where you should start. So um, there's lots of different options. Again, it's not a requirement that you take the ACT or SAT. It's just that if you have, you can use that to get placed into the right level. So this isn't a pass fail. It's again, just helping us figure out what level of class you should start in. After you do all those things, then we have you meet one-on-one -on -one with your pathway advisor who will help you figure out what classes you need to take and uh, can help you transfer and all of those things um, and really help you with getting your goals. And then we have you go to an orientation, which right now is online, but we will hope to offer those back in person again um, when it is safe to do so. So that's basically it when you want to um, get started at Front Range. Um, you can start any of our semesters. So we have fall, spring, and summer. And again, some people just take classes in the summer with us um, and attend their home institution. And then um, you can think about then how much time you're spending in classes based on um, credits. So this finally gets back to your question um, about how classes are kind of set. So um, in college, we use credit hours and one credit hour in college is approximately one hour in class per week. So most of our classes are three credit hours, which means you're spending about three hours in class per week. So usually how that's broken out is it, it's either three hours all at one time on one day, or more often it's actually like about an hour and a half on two days. So like Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. We don't really have a lot of classes that run on Friday. Um, and it, um, not a whole lot of classes like on the weekends, although that is, there's some options for that if you're working, um, but that's generally how classes are broken down. So it's not actually a lot of time in class. Where the time comes um, is actually the stuff outside of class that you're spending getting to do all of the things that you need for um, your homework and stuff like that. So hopefully that answered that question. Again, that's not a hard and fast rule. There can be other classes that are, are scheduled a little bit differently, but just again, um, that. let me go back through. I think I missed a couple of questions. Oh, okay, maybe not. All right. Um, you don't have to go full time because that, um, but again, it's just gonna take a little longer to complete all the classes that you need. And again, this is kind of like a sample schedule. So you can see a lot of the classes are just broken up into two days. So you have your class just two days a week. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about cost because there's a lot of things that go into the cost. And you all mentioned that it's a lot less expensive to attend a community college and that's totally true. So if you are going that full time again, taking about four to five classes, it's around 2000 to 2500 a semester. So if you do two semesters a year, like fall and spring, you're looking at about four to $5,000 for the year. Okay. Then you have to purchase books and supplies. Um, and so that's kind of an, I, I mean, it, it will, differ based on the number of classes that you take, but at least this kind of gives you an idea of about how much. Now, I know that's still a lot of money, um, but if you look at our partner institutions, you can see that it's for the same classes, even sometimes taught by the same people, it's still a lot less. And again, we don't have room and board because we don't have dorms, but that's still, you know, you still have to figure out some place to live and, and things like that. Um, 
The other cool thing about this is that the Pell Grant is actually more than $5,000. So if you qualify for the Pell Grant through the FAFSA, you can see that it covers the full cost of tuition at Front Range and almost covers the cost of tuition at MSU Denver. But if you go to these other schools, you're going to have to find other aid to help you pay for that cost. So there are students that are attending for free right now. They're not paying anything because they have enough financial aid. Um, and that's really awesome too. So um, as an option. Okay. And then what that works out to be is about eleven to $12,000 on average that you can save by doing two years with us. So hopefully that's convinced you that you want to save that money and, and um, save that money in your education. We also, again, um, a lot of students don't need to take out loans because their financial aid for grants um, covers and scholarships covers their full amount. So hopefully you also don't have to take out loans. A couple of last things. We do have a lot of different activities um, on campus. We had a taco truck on campus yesterday. Um, we're doing virtual events right now. There's uh, intramural games that happen, all kinds of things. Lots of clubs and activities that you can join. And again, a lot of support services that we have. So things like advisors or librarians that can help you research, free tutoring, um, counselors, our career success center, disability services. So lots of different options to help you um, and make sure that you're able to um, be successful. So I know that I pretty much used like all of my time, um, but I, we do hope to see you here and my contact information is right here on the screen. So feel free to email me, um, give me a call, let me know how I can help you. And again, I, you all had some great questions, so I appreciate that. And I'd be happy to answer any questions like that um, through email uh, or over the phone after, after today. So let me know. Um, and I will, again, chat in our uh, contact card so you can fill that out too. I forgot to put our QR code in my presentation, so sorry about that. But just click on this link and you can fill out our contact card and we can follow up with you for more information. So, Anna, there yeah. was one question, and I know you covered it, but I just want to make sure we address it. Um, mm -hmm. she asked, if they plan to go to Front Range for two years, will FAFSA cover most of the tuition? Yes. So um, it depends, of course, on what you're awarded, but the main grant, the Pell Grant, um, that will cover the full cost of tuition with us because the amount is higher than what um, the tuition cost actually is. Now, some folks... Um, because of the FAFSA, they might not get the full amount of the Pell Grant or they might not qualify for the Pell Grant. And so in those cases, um, the FAFSA may not cover the full cost. But yes, in general, if you, you're getting that full Pell Grant, it covers the entire cost of tuition. Yeah. And just like before I mentioned, I wanna mention to you guys that um, I'm gonna put here for everyone, if you don't, if you have not filled out the FAFSA, if you are still waiting, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> to fill out the FAFSA, this is a forecaster. If you click on this link, you fill it out, <coughs> excuse me, and um, it'll give you a rough estimate on how much you may qualify for. Of mm -hmm. course, you have to do, I mean, honestly, to fill out the FAFSA, it takes an hour of your time. It's not long. And then within a week, they'll tell you how much money you get under the Pell Grant and what you qualify for loans. That is not the only financial support that you can get though. The school here offers like 20 or 25 different scholarships. Uh, Front Range is constantly trying to throw money at you guys <laughs> as long as you apply. <clears throat> I mean, yes. it's true because we don't get enough students to apply sometimes. And nope. so you guys are always giving scholarships out, especially at the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, make this your part-time job, you guys. Make it your part-time job to apply for scholarships. And we're here to help you. Every totally. Friday, the Future Center is here to help you with scholarships and for financial aid. Yep. But we do need you guys to get your FAFSA done. Now, another way for your FAFSA, um, for, for you to get help, I want to show you guys that we have a wizard that can help you. He's called the FAFSA wizard. And um, I'm going to put the link in 
the virtual FAFSA wizard. He, Ms. Haithman, has made it really, really easy for you guys to follow this little cute little wizard guy. And it's a step-by-step -step on the FAFSA that's current right now. Okay, so please, you guys, reach out to us. Uh, Front Range is a really one of our best partnerships and they're uh, really affordable. They have great education. And honestly, this is, this is a no brainer for the ones that are planning to go to, especially the ones that are interested in the nursing school. The nursing school, because now you guys have like that four year option, which is new and awesome. And so, um, yeah, so you guys just, if you don't think you can afford it, reach out to us, advocate for yourself. We will help you. Yes. So I'm sorry, I have to run to go pick yeah. up my kiddo. Um, but I, again, I would love to answer more questions about the, like the nursing program, if you all have questions about that, because I know it's a little tricky with the competitive and the, the competitive application and the prerequisites and stuff like that. So please let me know, feel free to email me, give me a call. Um, and, um, you know, I would love to see all of you all as students with us, but I'd also be happy to answer any questions and help you along the way. So thank you, Hannah. Oh. Thank you, everybody, for attending. And, Thank you so um, much for attending. Recorded. So if any teachers or anybody else wants this recording, then we can send it out. Um, we can share it with you guys. All right. Take care. Thank you for the information and coming back. Yep. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Thank you all so take much. Care. I appreciate you uh, being here today. Goodbye. Have a great one.